That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, we're going to go through, talk about some of these buy low wide receivers. Last week, our number one buy low wide receiver in Jalen Waddle came out and he smashed. We're going to be happy to go through, talk about some of these options for week seven fantasy football leagues. But of course, before we get into it, make sure you go down there, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If somehow you're not subscribed yet, just past 54,000 subscribers. And also leave that comment if you want to get entered into win a fantasy flock network at. Let me pull up our last video to pick some random comments out. And I swear to God, this was by accident. But our first winner coming out from Free4L, who says, This channel's quickly becoming one of my favorites for fantasy. Keep up the great work. My friend, Hook'em Horns, happy to see it. Hopefully, you're in the Austin area. That way, you can represent the Fantasy Vlog Network nicely. And then our next one going out to Tyler says, 2-0 this week. Let's go. Appreciate all the help, Mason. No, thank you so much for supporting the channel, my friend. Make sure y'all just go through and send me that email ASAP with your physical address so I can get that out to you. And yeah, that should be it. Let's go through and let's talk about these buy low wide receivers. And we're going to be starting it off with someone that did not play in week six. And this is kind of what we talked about two weeks ago and that you never really want to trade for a player going into a bye week. So I didn't even bother including him on the video last week, but you knew we were trying to trade him regardless. We're going to try to go get Calvin Ridley. I mean, here with Calvin Ridley, this is a wide receiver that is just screaming to be a breakout in the second half of the season that if you're going to be going through, if you're going to be pulling up the volume that he has had so far this year, because we know with Calvin Ridley, we don't have to worry about the efficiency that much. We understand that with Calvin Ridley, we've had a long sample since 2018 and this being a young productive wide receiver that was able to, while yes, get a decent amount of targets per game, at least have a solid mark with his yards per target and his touchdown rate at the same time. This is a wide receiver that has already shown us the talent that he has in the NFL level. And at the same time, I mean, you already know that Matt Ryan is going to be close to leading the NFL in his passing volume. So when you have Calvin Ridley, who has the historical efficiency, Matt Ryan, who's going to have a ton of pass attempts, that's where volume meets efficiency and you get one of these elite level players. And with Calvin Ridley, I'm going to admit that efficiency has not necessarily been there so far this season. Now, with that being said, keep in mind here with Calvin Ridley, this is someone that's still been having the exact same role you expected him to coming into the season because with no Julio Jones here, while yes, you were expecting Kyle Pitts to be able to command a decent amount of targets per game, Kyle Pitts, not Julio Jones. Maybe he'll be equivalent of Julio Jones this year, next year. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But you're going to be looking at Calvin Ridley versus Julio Jones last season, the season before that. Obviously, Julio Jones, a premier wide receiver in the NFL. Well, Calvin Ridley stepped into this role with no Julio. And you actually see eight targets week one, 10 targets week two, 11 targets, 13 targets. I mean, while yes, the fantasy production at the end of the day has not been through the roof. I mean, he has been the wide receiver 25 so far on a points per game basis. This has been someone that is averaging over 10 targets a game. We know that the wide receivers that can average over 10 targets a game, they are so hard to find. I mean, you can't really even count those guys on one hand. Here we want to be going through and we want to be trying to acquire Calvin Ridley through a multitude of different ways. Option one, to go through and try to take a surging wide receiver right now, someone that maybe stepped into a role that they're not going to have a little bit later on in the season. We use them in a smaller piece to try to trade up for Calvin Ridley. A perfect example of this would be Cortland Sutton, who has been fantastic over the past two weeks. Over the past two weeks, Cortland Sutton has dropped 25 fantasy points and 23 fantasy points, and he has done this with the exact role you would want in Denver. I mean, he's had eight targets, 11 targets, 14 targets over the past three weeks. Now, that being said, personally, I would prefer to go out and get Calvin Ridley, knowing that you are going to be getting Jerry Judy coming back to Denver. So that's one potential trade. Another trade that you could look to make is we talked about this a week ago. If you're an owner of DK Metcalf, I mean, obviously it was a no brainer decision to move on from DK Metcalf when he's going to be dealing with some of the worst quarterback play in the entire NFL with Geno Smith to try to get over to Ridley that way. I mean, if you could trade Metcalf for Ridley straight up, that'd be fantastic. I mean, if you have CD Lamb 
after a very strong performance. Maybe you actually are able to move CeeDee Lamb for Calvin Ridley, and you can get an upgrade somewhere else in your starting lineup with just a small bump up. I'm not really looking to trade a running back for Calvin Ridley in this range, because if you're going to be looking at the running backs that you would have to move, I mean, you'd imagine that people are asking for the tier of Daryl Henderson, Joe Mixon, DeAndre Swift, and usually the running backs in that range. It's so hard to replace that level of production that instead I would rather focus in on pivoting from another wide receiver to get to Calvin Ridley as an option that should have the elite role in the Atlanta Falcons offense. And at the same time, we know he's incredibly talented. Now our next wide receiver, we're actually going to have a pair of teammates here. And this is going to be the Los Angeles Chargers and Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Now, if you're going to go through and look at what happened in this game, yes, the Chargers got blown out of the water by the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, the Chargers were completely ineffective in being able to move the ball down the field. I mean, Mike Williams, literally, if you played him, he most likely lost you your matchup. Now, you can't really be upset with Mike Williams because clearly this is a wide receiver that has also won you your matchup on a handful of occasions. But still, if you're going to be looking at his production this week, he was the wide receiver 67. I mean, you're going to be looking at five targets in this offense, two receptions, 27 receiving yards. But a big thing is, if you're looking at the snaps played, I mean, Mike Williams was clearly an injured player. He did not participate in practice all week coming until Sunday. And I think at this point, we can maybe come away with the conclusion that Mike Williams is the driving force of this Los Angeles Chargers offense where Mike Williams played 21 out of the potential 56 snaps. So what were you really expecting from Williams himself? This is just a player that you can almost treat it as if, I mean, he missed the week with injury, similar to how we were saying by low on Dalvin Cook whenever he came back and he had a subpar week whenever he wasn't fully healthy, similar to how we were saying by low on Joe Mixon when he went and had a subpar week when he was not fully healthy. I mean, it's the exact same situation with Mike Williams I know that would make us possibly expect a better week from Keenan Allen, who ended up being a low in wide receiver three, scoring at 10 fantasy points in this contest. But in reality, you're looking at Keenan Allen and saying he did pretty much everything he could. I mean, if the Chargers are only going to be putting up like six points in this game, if they're not even going to have a single touchdown, walking away with 10 points from Keenan Allen, I'll take that. I, I mean, I'll take that level of production. It is sad to see. Now, Keenan Allen does dip below 10 targets a game. Technically, he's at 58 targets through six weeks so far. But still, the point remains. Keenan Allen is close to that threshold, getting almost 10 targets a game in this office. And I'll keep in mind that the efficiency with those targets from Keenan Allen, they're not necessarily going to be as high as what you would expect with Mike Williams, knowing that Mike Williams is a bigger body wide receiver. He's going to have a larger role in the red zone. Also, he has a higher average depth of target. So those targets are going to be a little more valuable. But still, Keenan Allen, we know this is a wide receiver that's going to have an extremely high catch rate and I know that the Chargers had a very disappointing, very disappointing week this past week, but upcoming, they actually have a bye where you would expect they're going to be able to see Mike Williams 100% healthy all the way through. And then coming out of that, they go up against the Patriots, not the best matchup. Then they have the Eagles, the Vikings, Steelers, Broncos, Bengals. And then once we get to the playoffs, this is what you love to see. I mean, I would argue that they possibly have the best playoff schedule you can find. I mean, they get the Giants, the Chiefs, the Texans really want to be going through and jamming in Keenan Allen and Mike Williams everywhere we can. The problem is trading for them going into the bye week, similar to what we said about Calvin Ridley a week ago. There's no real reason for you to go through and trade for those players right now. I mean, maybe you do it before people kind of understand that this offense will have better days. I mean, that Mike Williams will open up the entire offense here. Or maybe you just wait until after the bye week and you trade for them going into week eight. Okay, so now let's pull up our next wide receiver who's also going into a bye. And this was someone I told y'all not to start this past week. Chase Claypool. Okay, so with Chase Claypool, yes, we said not to start him against the Seattle Seahawks because you were looking at this game saying, okay, well, um, Pittsburgh's not really going to have to throw the ball that often. We know Geno Smith, one of the worst starting quarterbacks in the NFL. I mean, this is going to be a low scoring contest where both offenses are going to be limiting the amount of plays that they are getting off. 
And with Chase Claypool here, that's kind of exactly what happened. I mean, if you're looking at it, yes, he played pretty much every single snap. He played 63 out of 75 snaps. So clearly getting that bump up with no Juju Smith-Schuster here. He does see six targets in this offense. Now Deontay Johnson, obviously that alpha wide receiver target. We told everybody to start Deontay Johnson. We put him in the top 24 wide receivers. Chase Claypool, a little bit of a different situation. But still, I think it's a very clear spot to understand the type of wide receiver that Chase Claypool is. And that this is an option that when the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be having to throw the ball consistently throughout the entire game, whenever they're not going to be able to give 26 carries to the running backs out of their backfield, I mean, that's when you play Chase Claypool. That's when he has the elite ceiling to go through and have that pop week. I mean, you go back to so far what we've had this season. I mean, in week three with Chase Claypool, you actually had 15 targets, 96 receiving yards, nine receptions at the same time. In week five, I mean, keep in mind, week four, he actually was suffering from an injury, did not play against the Green Bay Packers. Week five, he came out six targets, five receptions, 130 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown to go along with it. Clearly, if you're going to have the Pittsburgh Steelers offense throwing the ball consistently, that's mainly going to be driven through Deontay Johnson. But Claypool is going to be the efficient wide receiver out of the two. Claypool is going to be the more athletic, the more explosive wide receiver that can have those big weeks. So yeah, you're going to have a couple duds along the way like you just did against the Seattle Seahawks on a Sunday night. And keep in mind, Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night, those are the games that everybody watches. Those are the games where you get the strongest overreactions from. And I think those are the games that we maybe target when we're trying to buy low on a given player. Okay, so now let's go over to our next option. This is going to be a really cheap option for everybody who maybe doesn't want to be paying up to someone like Mike Williams, someone like Calvin Ridley. This is instead going to be Rondale Moore. Now, now hear me out. I know with Rondale Moore here, he didn't have a fantastic week, but you had AJ Green smashing, Christian Kirk smashing, DeAndre Hopkins smashing. But here with Rondale Moore, this is a wide receiver. Y'all know we said to sell high after week two. I mean, after you had that week two blow up when he was playing no snaps in this offense, I was going, oh, okay, well, if he's playing no snaps in this offense, we really don't necessarily want to be expecting the production to be there every single week. Well, yes, we love him for the end of the season. Right now, it's not going to happen. Sell high, buy low later. Well, this is the time to buy low because you see him in this game. I mean, yes, he only sees four targets, but he gets three carries as well. So we continue to see that they are trying to get him used really any way they can get the ball in his hands. And you're looking at the snaps played. This is really what I want to be looking at. You had 42 snaps played from Rondell Moore, 42 out of 75 snaps. That is possibly... Please, if I'm wrong, let me know. I believe that's the highest mark of Rondell Moore so far in 2021. So this is when he's kind of getting used as an every down player. Now, at the same time, I mean, you also see A.J. Green, DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, all playing at least 64 snaps in this offense. So they're getting used on every down as well. But, I mean, you're getting more four wide receiver sets in Arizona. This is something that we came to expect from this offense. And keep in mind, I mean, I don't want to bring this on anybody, but if you had an injury to A.J. Green, DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, you had an injury to any one of those players, and all of a sudden Rondell Moore takes up that level of usage, knowing that they have no other options in the receiving game other than those players, I think Rondell Moore will be fantastic. Now, I will say, yeah, Zach Ertz coming in. Zach Ertz may get some targets in this offense, but... Rondell Moore and Zach Ertz, they could not be more different. They could not be any more different than they currently are. I think probably Zach Ertz in the addition does not affect Rondell Moore too, too much. Now let's go over to another wide receiver. And this one is intriguing. And I'm not going to be saying to go out and buy this wide receiver with any price attached to him. But at least I want you to go and inquire about him. And this is going to be Devontae Smith. Now with Smith here, this is someone I have to admit. I had him aggressively, aggressively ranked in this matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the reason for this is you went through and you looked at what we actually had with this Buccaneers defense and looking at how opposing offenses attacked them. Essentially, every single week, you had the opposing quarterback having at least 40 passing attempts, at the minimum 40 passing attempts, with how Tampa can put points up on the board and at the same time with how their defense stops the run. Now, that being said, I mean, we were expecting the day, great day from the Philadelphia Eagles passing attack. It did not happen where Jalen Hurts had 115 passing yards, which 
I mean, I would have never guessed that in a million years, but still at the same time, we need to take a step back. We need to go, okay, well, yes, we're coming off a week where he has 115 passing yards, but what does the offense look like overall? Because outside of this, you've actually had Jalen Hurts with multiple top level performances, 264 passing yards, 190, 326, 338, 198, and then obviously the down week at 115. And another thing that I want to be looking at is the fact that with Jalen Hurts here, I mean, if you're going to be trying to project over the next few weeks for the Philadelphia Eagles, the matchups are about to get significantly better. You have the Raiders, the Lions, the Chargers, the Broncos, the Saints, the Giants, the Jets, Washington, and the Giants. I, I mean, a lot of those games, you're going to be viewing these Philadelphia Eagles top level players like Jalen Hurts, like Devontae Smith as must start options. And a big thing with Smith is this is a wide receiver that has showed us that he is going to command at least 20% of his team's targets. And with the loss of Zach Ertz, that does not only affect the Zach Ertz value in fantasy, that is also going to have an impact on Devontae Smith, who was already getting targeted at a high rate. But now I think that they're really going to have to lean on him everywhere they can. He did get four targets this past week. I know four targets doesn't seem like a lot, but I mean, you had 12 completions for Jalen Hurts. I, I mean, this offense just was not able to move the ball down the field. I mean, you actually had over, I, I think one out of six. What is one out of six? I would assume that is like 17%, 16.2. 16 I, I have no idea what the percentage is like that, but that is what he had with the receptions in this offense per completions by Jalen Hurts. Still getting a high percentage of his team's volume. The problem is just the team failed against the Buccaneers and there'll be brighter days ahead. Now, our next wide receiver that we are going to be looking at will be someone that failed a lot of people, failed a lot of people this week, but he has a good reason to do so, Kadarius Tony. Now, I have no idea how many people actually watched this Giants and Los Angeles game, but I have to fill you in on something here. Kadarius Tony got injured. Kadarius Tony left this game at the very beginning. If you're pulling up the amount of snaps that he played, it's kind of funny to see the stat line. Kadarius Tony only played six snaps, six snaps, and he came out and he had three targets in this offense. At that rate, Kadarius Tony was going to put up the best wide receiver game of all time. I mean, it was going to be ridiculous. Of course, that's not going to happen, but I mean, you're, it's impressive. He averaged over a point a snap here in this last contest. All jokes aside, still this is a wide receiver that, I mean, in a very limited sample, showed you that he was going to be an impressive option in this contest. And a lot of people are just looking at the raw fantasy points and then go, oh, okay, well, Kadarius Tony, I mean, maybe we can't start him. Literally, just please don't pay any attention to that. If you have someone in your league that isn't that good at actually looking into what actually happened, they just go, oh, Kadarius Tony, 6.6 uh, .6 fantasy points. I guess he isn't that guy. No, he looks like that guy. Go trade for Kadarius Tony. Looks like he is breaking out everywhere. Now, let's go over, and we'll talk about two more wide receivers here. I actually have a couple more guys on this list but I think that we can cut it around here. First off, I just want to give my opinion on T. Higgins. With T. Higgins here, we actually had him on our trade target video a week ago. I was talking about Higgins being a fantastic option to go through and trade for. Now, he does tie Jamar Chase in targets on this offense this past week. Still has that exact same role. Comes away with three receptions, 44 receiving yards. Problem is you get a lot of usage for Joe Mixon. That's not something we're expecting going forward. Joe Mixon and Chris Evans combined for more targets out of this backfield than you should really ever expect for the running backs in Cincinnati. I think once we get more volume going over to the wide receivers, once we get some more competitive games in Cincinnati, I think it'll be a much better spot for T. Higgins. Very impressive with what we had and him literally showing us that it's Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, wide receiver 1A, wide receiver 1B. And our next wide receiver, I, I just want to talk about him because... I mean, this is someone that had a very impressive debut for his NFL career, Rashad Bateman. Now with Rashad Bateman here, yes, he was playing in a little bit of a different game. I mean, obviously you had the Baltimore Ravens just getting out to a massive lead to start this contest, but Bateman did play 44 snaps right away. And that is a lot more than I was expecting. Of course, you have the Sammy Watkins injury, but 44 snaps is fantastic. He actually played a lot more snaps than Devin Duvernay, I mean, Miles Boykin didn't get any usage at all. And Rashad Bateman with 44 snaps actually led this team over Hollywood Brown in targets. He tied with Mark Andrews. So this is kind of what we were talking about and why we said to sell Hollywood Brown high a week ago. I mean, this is a wide receiver that you were expecting to lose some volume 
to Rashad Bateman. I think Bateman is a player that if he's on your waiver wire for whatever reason, go pick him up ASAP. If not, maybe you could just get him as a throw in in trade. Of course, you're going to have to monitor this Sammy Watkins injury. Now, thank you. That's all I got for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you go down there, drop that like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. And if you have not already, go support this channel on Patreon. You can find the link to Patreon in the description of the video. Go down there and access our rest of season rankings. And yeah, that's all I got for y'all. Really hope you have a great day and I really hope I see y'all with the live stream tonight.